A simple truth in life is that if you do what you have always done, you will get what you always got. That much we know. So I'd like to talk to you today about doing something new. Um, and I want to spend a minute with this photograph, which is not particularly, not going to win any awards in a photography magazine, but it's an interesting one with an interesting story. You see on there at the far right is me, and next to me is a woman in black who is of Turkish origin. Uh, and so she's a Muslim. She's dressed in black is in traditional style for her land. Next to her is a, an elderly lady who's Dutch. And that's not a coincidence. This photograph was taken in a city called Eindhoven in a low-income neighborhood. Um, and which is currently occupied largely by elderly Dutch, retired, and of course they have very generous retirement there, so you've got you know, people retire fairly early by North American standards and live a long life. And a huge immigrant population flowing in who are Turks. And this causes some interesting problems. You've got a generation of the Dutch, let's call them, although they're all Dutch, who are afraid of, don't know, and don't want to know these new strangers who are coming into their, their neighborhood. And you have a generation of immigrants who have, you know, their Dutch is good but not that good. They've got very strong cultural ties. They look different. They dress differently. If they're female, for the most part, they stay in the house while the men go out into the public square. Many times their cultures extend all the way back to Turkey, so they're in constant communications with what's going back at home. And it's not good for the neighborhood. There's a lot of fear. There's a lot of mistrust along with the problems. Can you hear well enough, sir? I'm sorry, I'll speak up. Um, along with the problems of um, poverty, and of course, remember, this is, this is European poverty, so it looked pretty good to me. Um, but of being a low income, um, they have all those problems as well. And on top of it, they have the problems of poverty and age. They have obesity. They have high blood pressure. They have um, diabetes. They have heart disease. The elderly don't get very much exercise, particularly because they're more housebound. They're afraid to go out in their neighborhood. Same problems, interestingly enough, for the Turkish population, because the women stay at home. And they eat a Western diet, and they get fat, and they get heavy, and they get sedentary, and they have health problems. So in this town, or this city of Eindhoven, small city, they came up with a project they call Domeo. And the idea of Domeo is to see whether we can come up with a way to make these people more active and thereby reduce hospitalizations, reduce our health care costs. And if we're really clever, the cost of the program will be more than offset by the savings on health care. Okay? Uh, and in, in the Netherlands, health care is, of course, it's a, it's a state function, but they have a very active private insurance industry. It's kind of a little bit like the U.S. model, except without all the nonsense, the paperwork, and the, and the fighting. It's a very, very effective model, but it's a public-private model. OK, so here's how Domeo works. The users subscribe, and they are given this nifty little HP touchscreen computer, which pretty much anybody can use. And it's set up with a set of icons. And so Mrs. Uh, whatever her name is, I can't remember, um, showed me. You just go over and press this little button on the screen. And you're instantly connected to the Domeo network. And in that case, we're connected to her exercise coach, who's there on the screen. And uh, so he leads his folks all together in very simple. This is not tough stuff, right? They're just little, you know, we're walking and we're doing this and whatever else. Well, that's nice. But here's the, here's the real thing. Mrs. whatever her name is, as well as the other Mrs. whatever her name is, wear a little cheap plastic gadget. Uh, on a lanyard around their neck. I mean, it's, it costs almost nothing. And inside it is an accelerometer, which is that thing inside your iPhone, if you have one, that detects which way it's pointing. It detects motion. And so that thing measures the level of activity of this person. And that thing is connecting to the, a Wi-Fi hub that was installed in her home and streaming information about her activity rate. And so when she goes into Domeo, she sees her activity rate. And she has goals. But here's the cool part. It's a social network. She has friends who are in Domeo. And the numbers for each of them are posted. And guess what happens? Competition. Competition. She, this lady, was blowing them away. She was so proud of the fact that she was just killing her neighbors. <laughs> OK, so the, the interesting part is final data isn't in, but it seems to be working. It seems to, there seemed to be the early, this was a, a nine-month pilot. Uh, and if it works, then the insurance companies have already pre-committed to paying for it. 
going forward because they're going to see the results in their bottom line. But here's the really interesting part that comes out of it. We get the, we get the, the narrow um, result we were looking for. But there's an, also an issue of social trust going on here. Why is this Turkish woman in this d white Dutch lady's house? They're friends. That's why. How do they get to become friends? Well, this enterprising exercise coach over there thought, well, this is nice doing this remote stuff, but I actually would like to get people together. I'd like them to take them for a walk around the neighborhood. And so every week he organized that. And at first, the only people going with him looked like her. And he didn't like that. So he worked with a young Dutch, a young uh, Turkish woman who's a consultant, actually, to the, to the government. How can we reach into these, these homes? How can we convince these families to let their women come out into the public square and walk around? And it turned out that this, this turn ended up being the key. The key. They arranged uh, video conferences where the Dutch consultant, the young woman, you know, who's, uh, I'm sorry, the, the Turkish woman, the, she's a Muslim, she and the exercise coach are together talking to the adult male of the family. And sometimes that adult male, adult male is in Eindhoven. Sometimes he's in Turkey. He's the elder. And through that process, they went down the list of what was going to happen and how it was going to work and, you know, was it going to comply with the tenets of the faith? And the answer was, oh, yeah, it's okay. We're just going to go for a walk. And the fact that he was, the coach was male was a little problematic, but they got around it. And so then Turkish women began showing up for this walk. And then they began, what of course, they're people. So what happens? You begin to know each other. And the fear begins to drop. And all of a sudden, the neighborhood begins to become more of a, of a bit of a neighborhood. Now, I don't know about you, but I think that's a lot of result to get out of this little project that doesn't cost that much. And it is a prime example of what intelligent communities are doing with the assets, the, in the information and communications assets, and the people to change the world for the better.